Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be looking at security misconfigurations. Now this is number five in the OWASP top 10. The other OWASP top 10s that I've really been talking about have related more to issues in the application itself, coding issues. And if you wanna see those videos, you can click somewhere, I'll put some up somewhere on the screen. But this is really about what we're doing when we're hosting our application. I'm gonna run through some examples of exactly what security misconfigurations are, what are some of the most common ones we see, and we're gonna look through some real life examples where breaches have actually happened because of it. Very quickly, please do me a favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel. We're new, but we're trying to make great security content for developers, so if that sounds like you, do it. And if it doesn't sound like you, then please do it uh, anyway, because, well, the Google algorithm gods will be on our side. So I want to jump straight into it. I'm going to talk about a problem that's probably one of the most common, or at least it was a couple of years ago. It's not the most severe, but it's the easiest to talk about and it's going to help us all get on the same page. And that is a security misconfiguration, which is very common, is exposed cloud storage. Now, this can be in the form of many things. In AWS, it's like S3 buckets, it's Azure blobs, it could be Google Cloud buckets, I think they're called. Really just these any kind of blob storage systems that we use in cloud. Now, the misconfiguration that we see all the time is that these being publicly accessible, there are endless news reports and literally millions of data records that have been exposed because people haven't secured their S3 buckets. They've left them public. And there's nothing actually wrong with having public data storage. It's only bad when the stuff's in there that shouldn't be public. So let's go into an example of when an exposed S3 bucket actually caused a lot of problems. And this, we're going back to 2017, and it was a breach from Verizon, which is a telecom provider in the US. And Verizon had a publicly accessible uh, S3 bucket that had some really sensitive information in it, including customers' phone numbers, their account pins, and also call logs and service details. Now, this could really increase the likelihood of someone going through a spear phishing attacks or SIM swapping attacks or areas like that, and so really put Verizon customers at risk. It was a very big breach and it exposed millions of these records. So how did one or how would one actually go about doing this? Now, this information not to be used for evil, only for educational purposes, but there's lots of tools out there to scan for such buckets. For example, there's tools like AWS Bucket Dump, S3 Scanner, and these can be used to try and find these publicly accessible S3 buckets and then download or dump that content so you can sift through it. I wanted to start with this one, not because it's the most prevalent or most interesting, but because we can really understand how security misconfigurations come about. You've created your application. You have all these different assets for, for it that's hosting your application, that's servicing it, and you misconfigured them and list some things public. Now, there's lots of kind of similar examples that we can now kind of lead into. A very common one is that sample applications come with some of these servers or software that you're using to host your application. These example applications can actually have very known vulnerabilities in them. And if you leave them there, even if they're not doing anything, attackers are actually trained to find these out and identify any known vulnerabilities, attack them. And they can actually access things like your console log, so it can do a lot of damage. There's also a big issue with default passwords happening. There was a big problem with this one, particularly with WordPress sites where the, the ad, admin dashboard panels were often accessible by the default WordPress passwords, which was like admin, admin, and people just didn't update these. So you can log into all these different dashboards of WordPress. We can take this same concept of trying to use default credentials and add just a sprinkle of sophistication, and we're now gonna go into a credential stuffing attack. What a credential stuffing attack is, is when you take a list of known passwords that have been exposed in breaches, for example, again, educational purposes only. There's one called the Rock U password set. Don't look for it, <laughs> but it has about, it has several million passwords that have been exposed in there. Credential stuffing is you basically take this data set and you're stuffing these credentials in. It's a much better way to attack than brute force. And in most cases, it only takes not very long to actually go through a million credentials, depending on what kind of limitations accounts have on them. Now, this credential stuffing uh, campaign actually works quite well and it's been used by a lot of hackers. There's a hacking group that was very prevalent a few years ago called Lapsus and they actually targeted NVIDIA in this way. They did a credential stuffing campaign against some of the admin panels for NVIDIA. They were able to break in and install a bunch of records and NVIDIA had to respond to this data breach. And again, there's lots of tools that you can use in this, such as Sentry MBA, Snipper or OpenBullet. 
which are all kind of open source tools that you can use to test credentials against admin panels. I'm going to say there's so much in this video, but please don't actually use any of those tools for evil. All right, I don't want to be delisted from YouTube <laughs> for teaching bad things. Now, I'm having to restrict myself a little bit because there's so much that I could talk about. You know, we, we, talk, we haven't touched on the fact of error messages. Error messages can, can, can contain really interesting stack traces that attackers can use that can be part of a security misconfiguration. I also haven't talked about exposed .git directories. I love talking about .git directories and all the things. Ah, you could do so much stuff in here. It can be a misconfiguration that you have actually all your source code exposed in a .git directory that's publicly accessible. So I, I can't kind of go into all of it, but you're getting the idea of this. But there is one particular attack. I've saved the best to last, I promise. This one is really bad and it's really common. So it's something that we probably should talk about. And that is our trusty friend, port 22. <laughs> And if you're not sure, this is the SSH port. Now, SSH or Secure Shell is a way to interact or communicate with your applications or into your admin panels or your cloud service provider. Quite often, more than anyone would like to admit, these SSH ports, especially port 22, are left open and attackers can use this to gain root access into your application or into your, your cloud service provider assets. Now, sometimes these are left open. Usually, this isn't done intentionally. Well, gosh darn it, I hope it's not done intentionally. It's usually from development and it's something's just kind of, you, you've left it open and during development and you haven't closed it. But even if it is closed, again, we can touch back on some of the other ones of default passwords and credential stuffing to try and gain access into this. Now, once you actually get access via SSH, there's lots that you can do. You can conduct man-in-the-middle attacks. You can try and gain further access. Perhaps sometimes you get root access, depending on if this is allowed or not. And you can also import your own backdoor. So even if the port is fixed, you still have all these problems going forward because you now have a backdoor in there. Now, you may be thinking, all right, but surely no one leaves port 22 open without any authentication. And yes, yes, they do quite a lot. There's been a number of events, right? A number of SSH uh, breaches that have happened. There's the Tesla Kubernetes cluster that was, uh, which left uh, a Tesla Kubernetes dashboard exposed in 2018. There was a Kobolas malware attack, which targeted European research institutions and actually targeted supercomputers. I'm not kidding. They were able to deploy malware onto supercomputers and install backdoors and gain access to credentials. There was the SSH backdoor in Linux in 2019. But then there was also mass targeted attacks. So for example, in 2022, there was the XM rig crypto mining attack, which actually did internet wide scanning to try and find these ports. And it was targeting kind of lesser known applications, ones that perhaps are more vulnerable. And then they installed a crypto miner onto them using the flaws in the SSH. Sometimes they did it with credential stuffing. Sometimes it was just open access. And again, it's really quite simple to be able to do this. Don't do this for evil, only for educational purposes, but there's lots of tools out there. Nmap is a great tool. <laughs> well, depending on how you define great, Nmap is a useful tool uh, if you know the target that you want to attack and you can find open ports on that. If you want to do internet wide scanning for research purposes, you can use a tool such as MustScan, which can scan kind of wide areas. Uh, I'm going to stop there. If you want to find more tools, you can Google it. It's not, it's not that hard. So what should you do? How do you prevent security misconfigurations? Well, there's a great set of tools called CSPM, Cloud Security Posture Management. And this is kind of a set of security tools. And essentially what it does is it gains access into your cloud accounts usually via some kind of agent. And what it does is it identifies all your assets within that cloud account and it tries to find if there's any security misconfigurations. Now, typically we used to rely on tools like DAST to find this or fuzzing, where we just kind of, the tool was blind to assets what you had and it just tried to find things. CSPM is different because it's more like an insider. Think of it as a security expert that's gonna go look through your CSPM 
CSP, your cloud service provider accounts, and identify misconfigurations. So like if you have port 22 open. Now there's lots of things that you should do as well. If we're talking about port 22, you should make sure you don't have root access on. You shouldn't use credentials. Even if they're good ones, you should use SSH keys to be able to access into this. And there's lots of other examples. But what I would really recommend is identifying all your assets. Because if you don't know what assets you are, and if you have a app big application, you probably don't, then a CSPM tool is really quite essential. Now, there are some open source CSPM tools. If you're using AWS, there's a cool tool called Prowler. There's also another quite interesting tool that's developed by T-Mobile called Packbot. And I've also mentioned Aqua Securities tools before, like Trivi. Uh, they have one called Cloudsploit, which is also open source and quite a good tool. Now, I work for Aikido, and Aikido, we also have a CSPM tool. Uh, it's fantastic, and I'm totally not biased. But what's great about the CSPM tool of Aikido is that uh, Aikido is actually free for you to check out and use. So you can jump in there and use it. And this just makes it easier because because it's click button and you can grant access and it's so much faster. But also feel free to check out the open source tools as well. So there we have it. I hope I haven't created any hackers in this video. I gave a little bit more tools than I usually do. Let me know in the comments if you thought that it was useful that I kind of told you some of these kind of hacker style tools and if you found that interesting. If not, I maybe not take the risk and just kind of leave them out in the next time. But as I said, if you really want to find this stuff, you can. Anyway, the next video that we're looking at, we're going to be looking at vulnerable dependencies. Ooh, open source supply chain stuff. It is actually quite fun. I'm quite passionate about this. I have lots of great examples, and we're going to talk about AI and fun stuff in there. So it's going to be awesome. Subscribe to the channel and wait for that video to come out. Until next time, I hope to see you all soon. Thank <laughs> you.